Well, hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel here. I'm a teacher and for today's video, it's actually going to be the last week of the extreme grocery budget challenge for the month of January where I spend only $30 to feed one person. If this is your first extreme grocery budget challenge video with me, especially for this series, I do have an introduction for this whole entire um, monthly plan along with all the other weeks that I have been doing this. So I will be sure to link that down below. I would suggest going back and rewatching those and then kind of coming back to this video, this is the last one. It will give you a really good idea of kind of how I roll over my ingredients and stick to my budget. So I thank you for joining us. For those of you that are, you know, you've been here a little while or some of my followers, you know what's up. So what I will be doing, of course, I'm gonna share with you my really small grocery haul that I'm going to be sharing with you the receipt to give you an idea of what I spent. There's a plane going overhead. Yes, I might as well say it here. For those of you that don't know, I actually do live in the Nashville, Tennessee area. So I am actually near the airport and there's just so many planes going by today. I don't know what's up. Anyway, so what that means is of course, for me, I thought go ahead and mention this right here. For me, I actually do live in an area where they do charge tax. So um, in my meal plans, in my grocery budget, I have been um, including my tax inside of it, this budget, because I do have to pay for it. So you will notice that if you do live in an area where you don't have tax on your food, then these things will be cheaper for you. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and of course and share with you the um, little small grocery haul along with the receipt. And then after that, I will show you the meals that I have made. Um, some of them I'll have like steps and such, and some of them I'll just be showing you the end product. I will be linking any recipes or any people that I mentioned that have given me inspiration or if I've used their recipe, of course. And then at the end, I will give a little recap of just the entire menu plan. I like to do that because I'm a teacher. I feel like I have to review. All right, let's get into it. Thank you for joining me and be sure to let me know if you have any other videos that you want to see me do. I'd love to do them. All right, the heater's on, so forgive me, but I did pick up some um, chicken and stuffing. This is a chicken flavor um, from the Great Value brand. Picked up some of their restaurant style uh, corn chips. I heard about these from See Mindy Mom. She's mentioned these a couple different times, like that they have 92 cent uh, corn chips for a, I believe it was a 13 ounce. Yep. Picked up some bananas. Here's something I've been doing differently. I've just been picking up like smaller ones. So sometimes I don't want like, um, you know, like a whole banana, like I just want like half of one, but by using a small one that works out for me. And I got five of them and they're already turning. So they might be future banana bread. Then I picked up some cream of chicken condensed soup. I typically pick up the, um, like a healthy heart, I think is what it's called, but they just didn't have it. So didn't get it. I grabbed some green beans. I was going to do carrots, but I actually still have some in the freezer and I've just been really loving green beans and the dish I'm going to be making is going to taste really good with green beans. Then I picked up some corn and let's go over to the refrigerator and freezer next. Okay. And then the fridge section, <laughs> I only picked up this right here, which are this little um, slices of ham here. So normally I'd probably pick up a bigger one, but I have a specific purpose for this and I don't need a ton of it. So I just picked up, there's just like a couple slices in here. All right, that's about it. Okay, and then here's my receipt. That chicken and stuffing is only 82 cents compared to like the stove top. The restaurant style chips are 92. All of the um, canned goods were 60, or sorry, 50 cents. The smoked ham was only 60 so altogether this came up to 453 but once again i get taxed on my food now where i live in the nashville tennessee area so total was 484 so i'm just going to make some pancakes from this great value complete um, buttermilk pancake mix and then i'm going to use some of these little cracker barrel um little syrup um, bottles that i have from my little um, package drawer section shout out to struggle meals for this idea of keeping a little package drawer or refrigerator shelf in my case. All right, I'll show you the picture of the breakfast. We are doing some extra batch cooking. I'm just gonna finish up the rest of those pancakes, the rest of the pancake mix for this week. This is a week where I am like redoing my little kitchen setup. So those videos will, out, will be out pretty soon. I think the first one might already be up. Anyway, I had um, the first set of pancakes you saw with like some syrup and everything, but the rest of the time I'm gonna be putting things like peanut butter. I have some Nutella, I believe. And I'm just going to be doing pancakes pretty much probably most of this week. I might make like a banana bread or something because like my bananas are getting like super wilted. So if I can figure out how to make a vegan banana bread, I will try that out because I actually don't have any more eggs. So we're going to just be having some pancakes and I might do a day with like banana bread and like some cereals. If I can figure out how to make banana bread, we shall see. Stay tuned. Okay, so for lunch, I have that little um, ham that I picked up. 
And then I also still have some of my cheese that's in this bag, along with a couple pieces of that crescent roll that I had left over from my pigs in a blanket. So I'm gonna try to do is like kind of roll out some little like pastry things. I don't know if it's gonna work, but we shall see. Okay, so there are four, like I said. Let me open these up. Put a piece of foil down just because I don't know how sticky this is gonna be, but we're just gonna kind of unroll them and see what we can do. Yeah, they are super sticky. <laughs> I think much stickier than when they were like um, coming out of the roll, or maybe not actually. Okay, so we've got these kind of pieces. Okay, I think what I'm gonna do, um, I think I'm just going to fill one side and then put the other side on top of it. I think that's what we're gonna go with. So let me go ahead and get some pieces of cheese. Oh, I have a couple pieces already cut up that looks like. We're gonna get a few. Actually, that might be good for that. I think that's what we're gonna do. Just do this piece because I think it's gonna melt up kind of big. So we're gonna cut that around. Okay, hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. I try to get a tripod. <laughs> then I'm just gonna cut open this right here. It's a little like budding ham. There's a couple slices in here. I'm just gonna take um, here. Oh, there's there's quite a few in here. I need just a few pieces for like a um for like this little um soup thing I'm doing later. So I'm gonna take two slices. And actually, you know what I think I'm gonna do? I think I'm just gonna roll these. I think I'm just gonna roll them like this. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna do them like I did the um, pigs in a blanket because I just think it's gonna be too thin. So I'm gonna do it like that and hopefully it will work out. Anyway, I'm just gonna cut a few more pieces of cheese and finish the rest. So we'll do that next. Okay, so now I'm probably just gonna cook these for like maybe 10, 12 minutes on 375 and we'll just see what happens. All right, so here they are. Just gonna have this for probably just the two days and maybe see if I have any chickpeas or something I can eat with this. I'll probably eat something a little bit later, but yeah, they look pretty good. All right, we're starting out with our dinner a little bit later than I thought, so I'm gonna be cooking it at high. I've got some water boiling because I'm going to make a cup of the Weiler's chicken broth here. So you didn't hear that going off. I did use a crock pot liner. Now, I realize it's not probably eco-friendly, but let me tell you, a crock pot liner definitely saves me because obviously I don't have like a full kitchen down here. So I love to use these. I picked up a 24 pack at Sam's. Otherwise I do buy the off-brand kind like Meyer. I know sells it. Uh, Walmart has their own. So be sure to look for them. All right, I'm gonna let that finish up and then just mix it with uh, a cup of uh, water. I mean, sorry, with the granules, with the cubes. Okay, that is done and I'm sorry that my heater is just going off. I guess the heat's turned up really high. It is really cold today, so I think they have it high upstairs. Okay, the first thing you wanna do, if you're not using a liner, they say to spray your, um, say to spray your crock, but I am going to just spray it anyways, at least a little bit in the bottom just because, um, hopefully it'll help with sticking. We're gonna stick our chicken in here and just salt and pepper it on both sides. We're just gonna make a layer of the chicken. So I'll do that next. Okay, next you're gonna take the whole entire container of your chicken and stuffing, and you're gonna pour this chicken stuffing mix, I should say, and just pour it all over your chicken. This meal actually is for um, like double the amount, like if you do the full recipe, I'll link it down below, but I'm only making half the recipe. So I'm using one pound of chicken, one box of the stuffing mix, one cup of broth, and one can of cream of chicken soup. So just keep that in mind. All right, the next step is what you're gonna do is take this broth, you're gonna make sure it's all like dissolved. I'm using um, broth like little cubes, but if you're just using regular broth, you can stick to the next step, but I'm gonna go ahead and break this down. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take um, this chicken, uh, condensed cream of chicken soup and what you're gonna do is put it together and you're gonna whisk it all together so let me break that down and then I'll start the whisking 
Okay, I suck a little bit in here just because it wasn't gonna fit in my cup um, because I used this cup instead of a bowl. I thought I could fit it all, but I was wrong. Anyway, I'm just whisking this all together. Um, it doesn't have to be too blended. I usually loose the blend it. And of course, um, that chicken that chicken cube is still kind of dissolving, but it'll be fine. Anyway, I'm gonna move this off to the side. Let me set it. I'm gonna set it over here so I can wash it when I'm done. Then you're just gonna pour this over everything. So here it goes. Oh, that wasn't the, um, I thought that was a chicken cube. It was just pieces of the chicken that were in the soup. Okay, I was wrong. All right, it blended faster. And then I'm just gonna move some of these pieces over here. Um, it will move around, of course, because you're gonna get some juices. I'm gonna kind of move it just so it's kind of there. It's pretty, pretty much blended. Okay, this doesn't look great, I know. <laughs> but this is actually, this actually comes out really, really good. So I'm just gonna move it around. I probably could put more broth if I wanted to. Um, I might. Um, anyway, I'm just let this cook up for, um, you can cook it for four hours on, on high or seven hours on low. It is already um, almost 12, so I'm gonna put this on high. And then toward the end, if I need to, I can put it on low or something, so. All right, we're gonna set this, put the top on there, and yeah, get to cooking. But I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. I'm gonna be making green beans with um, some butter. Pretty basic, I'm just gonna put it in the, in the microwave and just put a little bit of butter and salt and pepper. But I'll show you what it all looks like when it's done. Realize this does not look appetizing, but I promise you it's really good. I will link the recipe down below. All right, we are in my garage area where I stashed a couple things for the holiday. And I found this fruit cocktail along with some um, sugar-free jello. And yes, this is where I end up having to stick my toaster oven when I'm not using it. I hope to bring it back in pretty soon. I have a video coming out about that. Anyway, I'm just gonna be baking some jello with fruit cocktail. And I think I have some more whipped cream left. Why, yes, I do. I do have some whipped cream. So I've been using this kind of on my coffee and tea. Um, so there's still some in here and I'll have enough to add it on there, but I'm just gonna make some jello with fruit and whipped cream on top. Yeah, something pretty easy and really simple. I'm literally just gonna follow the directions on the back here and stir in the fruit. I don't think I'm gonna use this entire can because this has like seven servings. So I'll probably just keep some in a container. All right, I must confess those little croissant things that I made, um, I kind of split up that meal and I ate two of those and then I had some of this fruit separately because I didn't need all of the fruit for my jello, making the jello right now, but I ate some of that along with my little croissant things. And then I had a banana and then I'm gonna do the same thing tomorrow because I'm not gonna use all that fruit. So that was split into two meals because those little croissant things, they kind of shrunk and they weren't as filling as I thought they would be. So here we have it. I'm having some fruit. I'm gonna finish making the jello. I thought I would share this with you out here just because it's a little less noisy, but I'm going to be making this like ham um, and uh, potato like soup. Use shredded hash browns. I'm not sure how much I have, so I may cut the recipe in half, but to use this. And then I do have a little bit of cheese left over that I'm going to be splitting between this soup. And I don't know if I have enough for the nachos, but I do have this like queso I can always put on my chicken nachos. Anyway, I do have some sour cream to put on top and then... There is some cream cheese that you'll put in there along with like a little bit of flour and even some milk. I still have like my almond milk. I always get the regular, like the original unsweetened, but I don't get the um, vanilla unless I have like two of them. Like sometimes I will overlap and buy two. Like I'll buy one week, I'll buy the vanilla and then the next week I'll buy the regular just so I can use it in recipes. Anyway, I was making this soup and it's supposed to go in the crock pot. Toward the end, you mix together like a couple tablespoons, I think, of like flour with some water. And then you throw in the cubed cream cheese. So that's what I'm going to be having. And I'm just going to throw in the crock pot. I'll show you what it looks like once I've had it all done. But I will link the recipe down below. Before we get started with this, I do want to show you that I have some liners I'm going to use. And I do have garlic. Um, I have chicken broth cubes I can use. And then in the freezer, I had frozen chopped onion and these frozen carrots. I'm not going to shred them like the recipe says. And I know I probably don't have enough ham. I'm just going to kind of eyeball this and whip that out. It looks, wow, it looks super dusty without this. I'm going to wipe that out first before I put the liner in there. But I'm just going to show you these little things I'm going to be using for it. And I'm not going to film the whole thing because I think my light is blowing out. It keeps like flickering. So I'm going to just throw this in here real fast and just show you the end product, of course. 
the fridge. I have some chicken here that I'm unthawing because I'm going to be making some chicken nachos. So once this is done, I'm basically going to shred it, put it on those tortilla chips you saw, and I'm probably going to use that queso. I'm going to put a picture of it on the side. Um, unless I have some more shredded cheese left over. I really don't know if I will. All right, you're probably going to hear my dogs moving around, but here, of course, are my chicken nachos. You can just see some tortilla chips, some shredded chicken. I have a little bit of cheese here, but I also have some Tostitos um, cheese I can put on top. I have some sour cream and, of course, some salsa. And there's corn and even black beans in there. All right, so there goes my chicken nachos. Okay, we are coming up to the weekend and I actually have used up all the pancake mix. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna eat cereal, but cereal isn't quite filling, so I'm gonna make some banana bread. However, even though I had eggs left over from last week because I didn't make that um, Asian dish the entire time and I used like frozen eggs for the casserole, I actually dropped those eggs. So now I have these bananas that are ready to be banana bread and I don't have any eggs. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a chia egg. This is where you use three tablespoons of water and one tablespoon of chia seeds Whoop. and you let it sit for a little bit and you can use it in place of an egg. I actually have a video about a pumpkin bread that I made at Thanksgiving. I'll link that video down below and I actually made a vegan pumpkin bread that my friend um, shared with me. She is vegan. Anyway, so I'm going to use this egg, chia egg, <laughs> inside this banana bread. It should come out pretty good. Um, because I've used one before and I think it'll be fine, which I'm laughing hysterically because these are my new salt shakers and they're eggs and I don't have any eggs. Anyway, so I will let you know how this comes out. I will just search for a recipe. I saw one, I think it's called a one bowl banana bread and you can put like chocolate chips in it. So I'll try to try that one probably and link it down below. It won't be completely vegan, of course, because I'm gonna put chocolate chips in it. And then I do have some plant-based butter. So I may use that in there. Um, I don't know, we shall see, but I am gonna definitely use chocolate chips. So I will show you the finished product and I will link the recipe down below. Wish me luck and let me know if you try to use a chia egg because it has worked for me in other recipes. All right, stay tuned for the finished product. Right, Woody? I'm gonna show something here. I feel like anytime I've ever made banana bread, it always looks a little bit more runny than this so i don't know if that's just because of the chia egg maybe it wasn't as much liquid so i might put a little bit of almond milk in here just to kind of loosen this up because i mean i know there's a little bit of mashed banana still in there but it does look a little different yeah we're gonna add some just a touch of almond milk um, before we add the chocolate chips see if that changes anything Of course, the um, heater just went on. I'm just going to share with you my breakfast for the weekend. I am going to be using these Rice Krispies along with this Silk Dark Chocolate Almond Milk. I'm not going to show you what it looks like because um, it looks pretty gross, but <laughs> I did want to share with you. I'm going to have that. And then here is a piece of that uh, chocolate chip banana bread. came out really, really good. I can't even tell there's no egg in it. The only thing is I will say that I should have pulled it out of the oven a little bit sooner. I feel like my oven... Um, thing is just like bacon really fast or actually I kind of feel like it might be just where I'm at it might be drier like I showed the pictures of the dough where I had to add a little bit of almond milk um, so that it might be it anyway this is really really good I've been eating a ton of this and it was very very filling so eating it as snacks and I'm gonna eat it for breakfast probably put some butter on top anyway here it is and these are the weekend uh, breakfasts so you should try this recipe I will link it down below for my fun meal i'm just gonna be having some pizza rolls along with some of these potato wedges nothing too fancy schmancy but one of my favorite things i love pizza rolls and i love french fries so there's my last thing um i'll try to still pick if i remember but if not we'll just get into the recap all right let's do our recap for breakfast i had the pancakes and the cereal with fruit i also had for lunch ham and cheese pockets and then the ham and potato soup um, i realize it looks weird with two ampersands but you know it is what it is then I had for snacks, I had jello and fruit cocktail with the whipped cream, the chocolate chip banana bread, which I also ate um, during the breakfast time as well, just to keep that in mind. Here, of course, is my prep about the jello, the pancakes that I batch cooked, and to thaw the chicken out. Then for my meals, I had chicken with stuffing and the green beans for a couple of days, chicken nachos, and then my fun meal was pizza rolls and potato wedges. Don't mind that airplane going overhead. Anyway, this is the entire plan. Thank you so much for watching. Please stay tuned for more budget-friendly meals and just uh, cooking for one. Thank you so much. Bye, everyone.